So Greg, I think you're in the panelist room. You want to unmute yourself and give your presentation. Just let me know when you'd like me to advance the slides. Okay, advance the slide, please. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you great, yep. Okay, great. Well, I see there's a bit of a formatting problem, but we'll just uh, power through this. Okay, um, thank you, uh, John, and uh, the committee for uh, inviting me to uh, give you a, a bit of a pitch and update here. So uh, a lot of people have heard of us, some people haven't, but uh, we started as a small company in uh, 2012, and we were uh, really uh, focused on uh, you know, VRFB uh, and, and making the platform better, right? We uh, really focused in on some cost and performance problems, and uh, we have had uh, a number of innovations that we have licensed from uh, the DOE and uh, other folks. And plus we've mixed this up with our own uh, innovative work that we've done at WatchUle. Our business model is a bit different than uh, the uh, other folks. Uh, you've heard from uh, Matt and Salvatore and their companies. Uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit, uh, in a little while. Um, we do have ongoing programs with the US Department of Energy and the US Department of Defense. Um, the uh, DOE, as uh, Matt pointed out, is pushing uh, money out now into flow battery manufacturing. There's a big push there. Uh, the level of activity is way up uh, on inquiries and engagements for, from, from our point of view, ever since the new administration moved in and uh, is pushing uh, really big chunks of uh, investment into clean energy in general. So that's all good news. Um, and uh, we do have multiple uh, large uh, deployment projects. It's almost like we're, we thought we would be working with smaller systems, but it looks like we're working at scale at this time because we're supplying uh, core components. Uh, next slide. So uh, people ask us what the special sauce is. Um, you can see the, uh, the folks on the left uh, were the funders and the developers of some early IP. Our focus is on a core material set that's in the stack, uh, the system design, the overall, the, the way the system functions uh, and the way it's controlled through the BMS, the stack and the electrolyte. So we focus on the core, key, uh, core components and we have a complete IP portfolio uh, that addresses that. Next slide. So uh, in, our, in our universe, uh, our platform, uh, this platform is based on, as I said, a significant R&D base, but um, the, um, the, there are three core components that allow us to build all the system variations. So we've uh, sort of uh, have a standardized stack at 25 kW that we are um, uh, getting into mass production. We are working uh, with partners on the electrolyte and perfecting that, both the sulfate and the mixed acid, we can produce both. And uh, in the BMS that controls the system, uh, and with these three components and off the shelf uh, tech, uh, technology, uh, really uh, we can get people up and running, building their own equipment very quickly. Uh, and that's what's happening uh, with us, with uh, our, our customer set uh, right now. Next slide. So uh, ultimately, what do we sell? What we sell is we're selling technology uh, through a, a three tier licensing program but we also are aligned with strategic suppliers uh, that are helping us uh, produce electrolyte in quantity and, uh, and, the, and the stacks and other uh, sub-assemblies and components that people may want. Uh, now, there's a tendency for us to uh, engage people who are very big and they wanna manufacture themselves. And we, of course, we enable that. We have a very flexible model. So we can get you up and running with our own supply but uh, eventually, if you want to transition over to your own, you can make your own electrolyte and your own stacks. And uh, as you can see, though, there are some components that we would provide uh, long term because they have uh, some uh, proprietary technology embedded in them. Under the right arrangements, we would probably even license that uh, if the deal was uh, sufficient for us. Next slide. So I'm not gonna say much about stacks um, other than this one slide, I wanna focus on electrolyte more because it's closer to vanadium. So, but the, the fact of the matter is here, we've done a lot of work on the stacks. We have very high um, power density, current density that is. And what does this mean? What it means is we use much less material to produce the same amount of power. 
we use less membrane, less, less bipolar plate material, just less of everything. And that's how we lower our cost. We can typically get a three to five X improvement over, the, over what's out there today. I mean, I know some people are getting better and better at this, but we're always pushing the envelope and um, you know, trying to create the, 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 the best material utilization and the lowest cost possible. So that, that's where we're at. Okay, next slide. So uh, on the electrolyte side, I'm just gonna cover uh, one, two, and three today. I know that uh, recyclability, Mike Woolery is gonna do a, 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 a little presentation later. Uh, we've done something on recyclability, but we're really focused on cost as it relates to you know, the uh, electrolyte and the feedstock, and then the performance of the electrolyte as stated in those two items. Okay, next slide. So one of the uh, great things about the um, the, the PNNL electrolyte uh, that we have, that we uh, market and have developed and produce is that over the sulfate it has a much wider temperature range and band. So we are actually operating at a higher operating temperature, which means we can shed heat to the outside environment more readily. Uh, the uh, need for air, we don't need chillers or air conditioning. We can just shed our heat to uh, the environment with just the you know liquid to air heat exchanger, and uh, and the stability of the system overall is much better. And uh, the engineering considerations are relieved, obviously, with an electrolyte like this. Um, we've even taken our electrolyte all the way down to like dry ice temperature of minus 70. And uh, we've been able to reconstitute it with no problems to the electrolyte. Can't say that on the sulfate side. Uh, so in terms of the electrolyte temperature range, it's a real big advantage. You have lower capital costs for uh, the cooling equipment and just better all efficiency because you're not having to buy watts to cool the losses from the stack, uh, from the system. Next slide. So the electrolyte energy density is an um, uh, important uh, part here, right? So, um, it, and this is due to two things. It, this is due to a higher uh, molarity of the vanadium uh, that we can achieve um, in the uh, fact that we are, have hydrochloric acid that's in our mixed acid uh, formulation. So that means we can go to higher concentrations. Typically, you'll see concentrations of 1.6, 1.7 molar. We can go as high as 2.4, 2.5, okay? So that's, that's some of the energy density, but we really don't go that high. What we do is we you know, bump it up a bit, but what we do is we trade it off with the vanadium utilization, which you'll see in the next slide. Uh, and that's how we are able, we're really able to get uh, better uh, energy density overall, uh, almost by a factor of two, if your baseline for sulfate is 12. I know some people today nowadays are pushing sulfate. They can do 15, you know, they're, they're, they're doing what they can do by additives and everything. But we're finding that really the, um, the mixed acid is really giving us the a good stable energy density that, uh, you know, that's reproducible. Um, uh, next slide. So uh, this is a key factor here and that's vanadium utilization. It's, uh, this is a, how do you do more with the same amount of vanadium. And we've been working this problem for uh, years and typical vanadium utilization of the sulfate system will be about 50%, maybe, maybe a little bit more. But for us, we can get up to 75%, maybe a little bit more under certain conditions. And this, this it means that we are getting much more energy capacity per metric ton of vanadium that goes into the system. This is very, very uh, important. Uh, and uh, if you could give me the next slide, all of this translates to the cost. So this is how we can get this cost down from a nominal $175 per kilowatt hour to a 105 uh, number. Uh, and this is based on the historical average price of V205, you know, at a million liters, you know, at some production scale. Uh, so the, the, the fact is that this is due to the utilization is higher, um, that, that is uh, the case. We're actually processing less liquid, our processing costs are less, why? Because for the same energy capacity, we're actually processing less liquid. We're processing half as, as much liquid. So we're handling less, we're processing less, um, vanadium utilization is higher, and the key here is we also use a low cost vanadium feedstock. 
we can use, um, and, that, and that ties into uh, the next slide, if you can give me the next slide. So what we found is uh, this need for ultra purification, and I call it ultra purification because first of all, everybody's doing purification. We know that. But what we found is that we, when we ultra purify this, and I mean, and by that I mean, we go through and find all the bad actors, take them all out, right? So there's a lot of contaminants, quotes contaminants in the electrolyte, but there's certain contaminants and contaminant sets of contaminants that can create all kinds of problems. So depending upon the concentration levels and what those elements are and how they're mixed and what you're operating under can create all types of havoc. So we have developed on our end, the ability to extract, to you know, basically pull all that, pull all the bad actors out. Now we didn't want to do this originally. We ended up having to do it because we discovered it was a problem and there was no existing technology that could really do this cost effectively. So we've developed an equipment skid that basically will, um, once the electrolyte is uh, made, we, we, we uh, can uh, remove it, okay? Uh, oh, and the next slide will give you more, uh, give you a little pictorial of that. This slide shows you uh, basically going from the left to the right, we can take almost any feedstock and the beauty of that is we don't care about the impurity. Generally, we don't care, okay? But if we can use low cost metallurgical grade, we could use fly ash, we could use, you know, whatever it's coming from, all of these sources have different impurities. So what we wanted to come up with was a universal process that we could do a reaction mix. We mix all the chemicals and we get it to a certain state, but now we have this stuff, it's not balanced, it's not pure enough, so what do we do? Then we put it into a processing skid that we've developed and it go, puts it through a process of ultra purification and balances it. And then at the end, we have electrostore electrolyte. Now this process works for sulfate. It works for chloride, the chloride by chloride, I mean the mixed acid uh, uh, PNNL version. And, it's, um, and it handles wide variations in, in impurity. It solves the problem. So we're very uh, happy about this. And we provide this as part of our uh, electrolyte license. Uh, and then the last slide. So the summary here is that yes, uh, the good news, real good news is that we've substantially improved the cost and performance today, okay? The next point is that, well, those advances are available and they're available through licensing our platform and then also through uh, our ability to supply electrolyte and stacks, or, and we can enable uh, our customers to take that on themselves with the technology transfer uh, process working with us. And then um, uh, uh, once again, I wanna say that ultra purification, uh, we believe is mandatory for stable, long-term stable uh, VRB operation to prevent you know, gassing and side reactions, all that stuff, we, the, 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 the stability is, is so excellent that um, I'm, so, I'm surprised really more hasn't been said about this issue or, or put out there, maybe because there hasn't been really a solution. And we may not wanna talk about problems if they don't have a solution, right? So you know, we have a solution, we're very happy with it. We think it's gonna do a lot to push the more advanced uh, electrolyte that we have into the market and commercialize it. And the real good news is the last bullet, um, Wadjil is now involved uh, within the last year, uh, we have gotten some major traction on some large projects, all motivated by the need to reduce cost. We all know that cost is an issue. We can have a major impact on cost with our uh, system. And everybody that's doing this is really considering, um, you know, seriously considering that, you know, maybe the sulfate technology, it's time to move on to the next platform and, and which would be the uh, chloride base uh, in order to get the cost benefits. So um, the good news is that we're enabling this and we're enabling it worldwide. Um, we are working with smaller companies too, but most of the people that wanna work with us want to get into VRFB immediately they want to limit the risk and they want to do it fast and that's why they talk to us but you know we all have different business models and and uh, that's that's a good thing because that's just getting getting adoption uh in various ways so um 
I support all the efforts of, by the way, of all these companies. And we would even work with these companies uh, too. Anybody that wants to work with us, we're partnering with everybody. Say thank you.